practice the Dharma, it's as if you're learning how to be your own doctor, looking after the illnesses of the mind. Everyone comes up here wounded in one way or another, suffering from either things outside or things inside. Due about the time of the Buddha, people were suffering from greed, anger, and delusion, just like we are. And with modern society and modern culture, it seems that we just have more diseases in the mind. More complex ways of getting involved in greed, anger, and delusion. But it all comes basically down to the same three roots. So the treatment here is learn how to uproot the disease. And so as you come up here, you want to look at this as a time for healing. And the skills you want to take back with you are the skills of learning how to be not only your own patient, but also your but both doctor and patient. Learning how to look after the mind and see exactly where it needs treatment. And part of the, the treatment is just that healing. And healing requires rest, it requires nourishment. And this is a lot of what the breath meditation is, giving the mind a place to settle down and be at ease with itself, to develop a sense of well-being inside. Stay with the breath. And as you listen to the Dharma talk, really, don't really listen to what I'm saying. Give 99% of your attention to the breath. Leave 1% out to in case anything good comes by that is actually relevant to what you're doing. Don't let the talk distract you from the meditation. And allow the mind to settle in. You want to develop a quality where the awareness and the breath become one. When you're right in the middle of the breathing process. Not like you're in one part of the body outside of the breath watching another part of the body breathing. You're in the breathing in, you're in the breathing out. And allow those two things to stay together, the sense that the actual sensation of the breathing. You'll also have to think about the breathing in order to keep the mind from wandering off. If the sensation of the breath isn't enough to keep you with it, then you can use a meditation word along with the breath. Use the word butto, which means awake. You think bird in out, butto, butto, or any word that helps keep you in the breathing. And if you want, you can think about the meditation word filling the whole body. The whole body goes boot, the whole body goes toe. So there's no corner where anything else, any other thought can come in. And you begin to realize that the breath is filling the whole body as well. The whole body gets involved in the breathing process if you allow it to. Every nerve gets involved with this energy flow. And so think of them all working together. Think of what other rhythm of breathing is soothing to the body, soothing to the mind right now. So the mind feels that it can just kind of melt into the breath. Your awareness melts into the breath, they become one. is not just a bubble bath for the mind. There's the healing, comforting, soothing aspect. But remember, medicine comes in all sorts of forms. Some of it can be pretty strong. Now there's, in other words, once the mind settles down, you have to watch after it and make sure that it doesn't go wandering off and doesn't get start getting lazy and complacent. Remind yourself as the mind goes wandering off, okay, what trouble are you looking for now? What do you hope to get out of that particular thought? And sometimes just that little warning is enough to bring the mind back. Other times you have to work at it a little bit more focused. In more detail exactly why you don't want to be thinking right now about anything else. And bring the mind back to the breath. So it's not just the, the nice side of the breathing. There has to be a constant vigilance over the mind. 
because the problem with the mind is as soon as it starts getting comfortable, it starts getting lazy and complacent. And that's not the treatment at all. That's not the medicine that the Dharma provides. Once the, your sense of awareness settles in and gets comfortable, okay, you have to be very watchful to make sure it just doesn't slide off someplace else and start creating trouble for yourself. And so as the, the doctor for your mind, you want to combine these two qualities. On the one hand, there is a sense of ease that comes with the breathing. But you have to maintain mindfulness, you have to maintain alertness. Keep focused on the breath. Remember the sense of ease and comfort is a product of your focus on the breath. If you lose your focus and start focusing on the wrong thing, then once the cause is gone, then the result is going to have to start fading away as well. Then you're left with nothing. It's like building up a scaffolding and then seeing a cloud right next to the scaffold. It looks nice and comfortable, so you go and jump on the cloud where you go right through. So remind yourself, whatever sense of well-being there is, there is work to be done. After all, this is medicine. It's not always pleasant. It's not total relaxation. There's got to be a certain amount of vigilance to keep the mind with the breath and not let it blur out. One way of doing this is once you've got a sense of ease with the breath, start thinking about the breathing process in different parts of the body. Just go through the party, one part, one by one by one. Noticing how the breath feels at this particular part. You might want to start at the navel when you do this. And then work up the front of the body, work down the back of the body, out the legs. Then start again at the back of the neck, go down the shoulders and out the arms. Just take the body section by section and notice how that section of the body feels as you breathe in, how it feels as you breathe out. If there's any sense of tension or tightness, just let it dissolve. So that you breathe in without building up any tension there, and you breathe out without holding on to any tension that may already be there. Just let it flow out. And then you move on to the next section and the next. Keep on doing this until you have a feeling that all the parts of the body are breathing together. It's a coordinated sense of the whole body breathing. And then try to maintain a broad awareness of that. When the Buddha talks about the 16 steps of breath meditation, number one, number two are just noticing the breath. Number three is training yourself. You're willing yourself to be aware of the whole body. And you'll find there's a tendency as you start getting lazy for that awareness to shrink. You can't allow that to happen. This is the work you've got to do. Stay with the whole body, the whole body, the whole body as you breathe in, whole body as you breathe out. And then work to maintain that. In the beginning you'll find that the work you do is maybe seem to be too much. Well, it's probably because you're not doing it very efficiently. Just notice, okay, what needs to be done, what doesn't need to be done in order to maintain that whole body awareness. Until you find that you can maintain it. You find there may be slips and you're working with trial and error here. It's you're working on a skill. Try to think back to whatever manual skills you've ever developed. Carpentry, sports, cooking skills, whatever. And the type of attitude you had to have. Which, okay, there's a mistake, you don't get let yourself get upset by the mistake. You just start all over again. When things turn out well, okay, don't let yourself be complacent. Try to think about well, what other ways can we improve it to make it even better? But there's a certain balance, there's a certain stability and maturity that you have to bring to any skill. That's the kind of attitude you want to bring to the meditation. If you let yourself get too easily discouraged by bad sessions in the meditation, or start getting complacent and cocksure about yourself with good sessions, okay, you're setting yourself up for a fall, and no skill is going to come from that. You just want to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Whatever mistakes there are, you learn from them. Whatever, path, whatever times go well, you try to learn from those as well, too. 
If you come out of a good meditation session, don't leave it immediately. Just reflect on, well, what went right this time? What did I do this time? And the more often you do that, the more precise your observation is going to be, and the more you really do start seeing cause and effect as they operate in the mind. We're looking at working on a long-term project here, because you come to realize that even though things happening from the outside may be wounding to the mind, the real diseases come from within. Our lack of skill in managing our thoughts, our lack of skill in relating to feelings, perceptions, thought constructs. And so what we're doing is learning new skills to relate to what's going on in the mind, new sensitivity that comes with these skills. So that the skill is not just staying with the breath, but finding out ways to relate to whatever comes into the mind in the course of the day, wherever you are. And the sensitivity you build up while you're working on the meditation should be applied to what else is going on all around you. It's like someone who takes a beginning art class. You come out of the art class and you begin to notice colors and arrangements, not just in paintings, but all around you. You have a heightened sensitivity. It's the same way with the meditation. You just try to take the sensitivity that comes in the meditation and apply it to the way you relate to your thoughts. As they, as they arise, the way you relate to your emotions. And this sensitivity is what enables you to start seeing the subtle causes of the diseases in the mind. And you realize that if the mind doesn't wound itself, it doesn't, open op doesn't leave an opening for anything outside to come in and wound it. We're the ones who lower our own resistance to outside diseases, allow them to come in and infect the mind one way or another. If it weren't for these internal tendencies, there wouldn't be any problem living in the world. The mind would be totally resilient, not insensitive, it was just it wouldn't pick up diseases from outside. But the reason it does pick up those diseases, it leaves an opening from inside, the way it mistreats itself. So we're learning new skills in how the mind can treat itself, how it can relate to itself. Taking the breath as our foundation, because it's an excellent barometer for what's going on in the mind. So try to get as familiar as you can be with this basic medicine. Once you've got the basic medicine down, okay, then you learn what other ingredients you need to add for specific ailments as they come, what you need to do in the case of anger, what you should do in the case of greed, what you should do in the case of fear and worry or whatever. But the basic treatment is just this, learn to be with the breath, allow the breath to be comfortable, and then let that comfortable breath spread throughout the whole body. This is the basic skill on which all the other skills are. Get based. This is the foundation. So you want to make sure the foundation is solid. Even when you move on to more advanced stages of the meditation, you always want to keep coming back to the breath. Because it forms the center. for this whole course of treatment that we're working on.